Hey everybody, my name is Michelle and in this video I am going to do an insanely big summer book haul. It has been a little while since my last book haul, a couple of months, and in the meantime I have bought and received a lot of new books. And yeah, in any case, it's just going to be another one of those huge book hauls. I have some new releases, I have some very exciting gifts that I received, I have some books that are just randomly there for no specific reason whatsoever, except that they sound amazing and that I really want to read them. So yeah, I think that by now you probably all know how a book haul works. So I'm just going to start because I have a lot of books to talk about. This video is probably going to be long enough as it is. And yeah, I'm just going to tell you all about the books that I've bought this summer like in the past couple of months. I have chosen a very random order to show you guys but I think I'm just going to start with like some of the new releases because there have been quite a lot in the last couple of weeks. So first of all I have a beautifully foolish endeavor by Hank Green. This is the sequel to an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green which was released I think two years ago. In any case uh, Hank Green you might know is from the Vlogbrothers like a famous YouTuber. An absolutely remarkable thing was all about a girl named April May who one day finds a very weird and mysterious statue on the sidewalk in New York City. She names the statue Carl, she makes a video with it and the next morning her video has gone viral because as it turns out there are a lot of different Carls on a lot of different places all over the world and nobody knows who put them there and what they are and that is sort of the gist of the story so it is about the Carls and the sort of sci-fi aspect to it but it's also about April May and her becoming famous and her dealing with that and how you basically do that on social media and everything. The first book I loved it so much it was one of my favorite books of last year. It is so weird but in such a good way. Mostly because it's sci-fi but also it's very relatable with internet and everything. Um, yeah this is the sequel that has finally come out. I believe it was the beginning of July. I don't know. Probably that. A couple of weeks so I pre-ordered it. I received it as soon as possible. I've actually already started reading it but I haven't read that much of it, like, I don't know, how far am I? I believe like a hundred pages in or so, so I have started reading it and so far I am intrigued, but I still have to read most of it, so that will be another story for another video, but I'm very happy that I got this and I want to finish it as soon as possible. Then I have another, well, I guess it's a new release, but it has been a while, but for me, for this video it is still a new release because I haven't officially hauled it yet but that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins the new prequel to the Hunger Games series. This is all about President Snow who is the antagonist of the Hunger Games and here he is the main character. It takes place during the events of the 10th Hunger Games and President Snow, he's not President Snow then but he's a young man and he is the mentor of the girl tribute from District 12. So you've probably heard about this, I did a whole reading vlog about it with spoilers but I will leave a link down below in the description box if you want to watch it. I also talked about it without spoilers in a recent wrap up, again link down below if you want to watch that. I'm not going to talk about it too much right now because I feel like most people know about this book and the opinions were very mixed. Some people really loved it, some people really hated it. For me it was a four star read for multiple reasons, again watch those videos if you want to find out but indeed I am very happy that I have this book and I did enjoy it and I do really love like this edition. You've probably seen it but it's the edition with like the yellow um yeah naked cover underneath with a snake and it's very big like this book is quite big and yeah I'm just very happy that I have it in my collection. Another recent new release so I guess the theme for right now is just new book releases but that is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is her newest YA contemporary and it's about a girl named Georgia who is 18 years old but she still hasn't kissed anybody, she's never had a crush, she's never had a relationship but now she's going to university and she really Really wants to have like that one special person and she is very romantic and obsessed with fan fiction but during this time she also starts to learn more about herself and she starts questioning about whether she's asexual or aromantic and things like that so I believe it's mostly about that asexuality and sort of like discovering yourself and things like that it sounds very very intriguing from what I've heard it's very well written and it's very relatable and it's just overall very good even though I'm not the biggest fan of why a can Temporary. I have read some of Alice Oseman's books before and I have really enjoyed them. They're usually again well written and about relatable issues so I hope Loveless will be as well. From what I've heard so far it is mostly positive like it's basically all very positive reviews so I think I will enjoy it as well and I also thought it would be nice to have a contemporary for during the summer. I have actually some more contemporaries on this list which for me again it doesn't happen that often but 
apparently I really felt like it. Next up, a book I'm so excited about and that I want to read so soon, but that is My Calamity Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton and Jodie Meadows. So this is the latest installment in the sort of Lady Janey series, which is a series of books all about famous Janes. But their story is being retold in a very funny and very silly way and there's always some kind of supernatural element to it. So previously we had My Lady Jane, which is about Lady Jane Grey. Then we had My Plain Jane, which is about Jane Eyre. And now we have My Calamity Jane, which I believe is the final installment in this sort of, well not book series, because these stories are separate. But sort of book series since it's the same concept. And My Calamity Jane is about Calamity Jane, whom I know nothing about. I believe she's some sort of outlaw, like in the Wild West in America, I don't know. It's really not my kind of history, but still, because it's part of the series and it because I love the first two books so much, I really hope I will love this one as well. So I'm so excited about it. I know it will be hilarious because these books always are. And yeah, cannot wait to pick it up again. <laughs> the next book that I bought is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This is the sequel to A Pinch of Magic, which is a middle grade book that I read a little while ago. This series is about three sisters who are trapped in an ancient curse and they want to break it and there's lots of adventure. I love the first book so much because it was just so cute and sweet and heartwarming and amazing and it's all about like the sisterly relationship and it's so fun. So naturally I had to order the second book because I want to read this sequel so badly and I still haven't read it and I don't know why. Well, I do know why because I like I was writing my thesis so I literally had no time for it. But I'm going to make time for it very, very soon because... I love the first book so much and I just really need to read more middle grade because middle grade is amazing and I feel like I've been really sleeping on this genre. So that is why I bought this one and I hope the second book will be just as amazing as the first one was. For my next book I bought some historical fiction because I feel like it wouldn't be a real book haul of mine if I didn't include at least one historical fiction book. But this one is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. It is about a slave girl named Cora who lives in the south of the United States in the 19th century and she's trying to escape through the underground railroad to the north for hopefully a better life. So from what I've heard like the premise is pretty well not basic but straightforward but of course with a topic like this about a piece of history like this it's going to be very very intense. I've heard some very good reviews about this book and about Colson Whitehead as a author in general. I've also heard that he has some other books that are really well written so if I like this one I will definitely be interested in reading more of his work. But yeah it's a different kind of historical fiction one that i just haven't really read that much about like the time period etc so i really hope it will be very good and i'm very much looking forward to reading this then another why a contemporary like it's really out of character for me but i have another one and it's opposite of always by justin a reynolds it's about two teenagers named jack and kate and they meet at a party they fall in love they become a couple but then kate very tragically dies but the moment kate dies jack is very mysteriously transported back to the moment that he meets kate and he's determined that this time around he will try to save her and do whatever he can to change the future or like change the timeline or something like that but of course that also has consequences so that sounds like I just love premises like that that are so just they sound heartbreaking but also interesting and I really love or I really want to see the execution of it if it's done in a very good way then I'm sure I will love it I've heard some very positive reviews about this book again I mean that's usually the case with all the books that I buy because otherwise I wouldn't really buy them but yeah another YA contemporary that I'm very much intrigued about and another one that I hopefully like can read during the summer then for the next book that is quite an interesting one and I've already read it it, but it's Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is actually sort of a classic. It was written in the 1970s, so that's also the time that the book partly takes place. It's about a black woman named Dana. She lives in the 1970s in the United States, but somehow Dana is mysteriously transported back into time to 1815, where she saves the life of a young boy named Rufus. He's also the son of a slaveholder, and in this time period, Dana is assumed to be a slave because of the color of her skin. And and somehow Rufus and Dana have this very weird connection where every time that he is in mortal danger, she again is being transported back into time. So it is sort of historical fiction because a big part of it also takes place during like uh, the beginning of the 19th century. And of course, it's very much about Dana struggling with the fact that she's now 
assumed a slave and it's all about that and it's such an interesting concept to see how it would be if you're actually transported back into time and how the situation is. I've already finished this book. I read it a couple of weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. It was so well written. It is such an important and intense topic. Like I just loved the way it was being handled. I thought it was very well done. And somehow I also really like the aspect of the time traveling. I feel like it's just... I don't know, hard to explain, but I always like it when books do that. And I'm very happy that I bought it and that I read it because it was a five star read for me and it was just so good. Next up, I have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is about a girl named January and in this big house that she lives in, she finds a mysterious book with, I believe, mysterious doors in it. And she can escape through those doors. So it's about like different stories and different books. Don't hold me accountable for that because I'm not completely sure what the story is about, like apart from that. That's sort of the vibe that I got from like the premise on the back of the book. But anyway, it sounds interesting. And again, this is one of those books that I've heard nothing but good reviews about. And it sounds magical and wonderful. So yeah, it is just one of those books that I bought because I like the premise or like what I understood of it. And because it was on my radar and yeah, the paperback came out. That's also one of the reasons. <laughs> Don't have like a big story apart from that. I just bought it because it sounded interesting and I wanted to read it. Next book that I bought is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is about a girl named Simone who is HIV positive. She's also in high school and she gets a crush on a cute boy. Again, I don't know much about it, but I believe it's mostly about her dealing with that, her life, and also, of course, being HIV positive, which is something that I've never read about in a book before. So that is one of the reasons that this book really spoke to me. And again, it's another YA contemporary that I want to read during the summer and another story that really spoke to me. Again, same old, same old with all of these books. The next book in this haul I actually received as a gift, which was so sweet, but it is All Our Broken Pieces by L.D. Crichton. So I received this book from Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, like so sweet. Oh, I am really happy with it. The story behind it is that I actually gave him this book for his birthday. So I sent it from his Amazon wishlist. And then in his video, he talked about how amazing this book is because it's the paperback version of a book that he already read. And he was saying that I should put it on my wish list as well and that he would send it to me and I mean after he was so enthusiastic I was going to put it on my wish list anyway but he actually sent it to me and I was like so so like happy with it and touched that he sent it to me and like it's so sweet so thank you so much Gavin for this book the story of this one is that it's again a YA contemporary it's about two teenagers and one of them struggles from OCD and the other one lives nearby and like their paths cross apparently probably not the best description of the premise but Gavin made it sound amazing and apparently it's a very good book and emotional and amazingly written so that sounds wonderful and again thank you so much Gavin I'm very very happy with it it sounds amazing next book was also a gift it is The Odyssey by Homer translated by Emily Wilson this was a gift from the lovely Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction so we were talking about this and of course Ashley like she did like a whole thesis or a dissertation about this book and this translation and other literature so she's actually an expert on like this specific book and she sent it to me as like sort of a thank you because we did a lot of FaceTime study sessions to help each other work for school and everything which was so nice so she sent this to me and I'm so happy with it because she says that the translation by Emily Wilson is a really really good one because it's much more approachable and much more readable it's not like too difficult or too hard to understand I've never read the Odyssey even though I I do know the story quite well or like quite well I do know the story and I really wanted to read like one of the translations and I'm so happy that I have this now and I cannot wait to read it at some point so again thank you so much Ashley I'm very happy with it I just love the look of it by the way because it looks so like I don't know ancient like ancient history and I really want to read just more Greek plays and Greek stories and Greek history and things like that. Sounds amazing. So very, very happy with this gift as well. The next book is a small one and it is Women and Power by Mary Beard. I believe this is mostly a lecture that she once did about feminism, but in book form. I don't know much about this book, but I do know something about Mary Beard and her other work. I have read Pompeii, like one of her history books, and I really enjoyed her writing style and the way she tells the story. So that is why uh, yeah, I picked up this book as well because, yeah, it is cute and tiny, but it sounds like she definitely has some very important things to say. Should probably read this one soon as well because it's a small one. It doesn't take, like, that much time to read and it's just, I don't know. I find it very cute because it's so tiny and 
shiny and yeah it's also apparently a very good book. I also have a very exciting history book and it is The Five by uh, Helly Rubenholt. So in this book, Helly Rubenholt tells the story of the five victims of uh, Jack the Ripper. So their backstories, their lives, it's really focusing on them and not on like the murder and who has done it and who is Jack the Ripper. This one is supposed to be different because it really focuses on the victims and their stories. So this is one that I also bought because Ashley was talking about it. It's supposed to be very interesting and sort of like a new perspective. And of course, I always really love to read about history and I actually don't know that much about Jack the Ripper and like his victims and everything. So it sounds very, very intriguing. And I just, I love history very much. I love historical things that happened and I want to know more about it. So. Again, want to read this one very soon, but don't know when, but hopefully somewhere in the future. I also bought The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley, which is the first book in the Seven Sisters series. As you can probably tell, it's about sisters. It's actually about six sisters, not seven, but it's... Yeah, it's sort of hard to explain. <laughs> Every book is about one of these sisters because at the beginning of the series, their adoptive father dies and he leaves all of them a clue to their uh, true heritage, where they come from. And every book is about one of those sisters finding out where they have come from. And there's also a historical love story, at least in this one. And from what I've heard, there's also a historical love story in every single one of them. First book is about the eldest sister named Maya. She goes to Brazil. That's all I can say about it, but yeah. This book is just so like mind numbing. It's the sort of book that you can read if you're not thinking about much because it's just fun. You know, it's a fun book. It's like love story. It's drama. It's finding things out. It is not very deep or anything. It is not high literature. It's not like a classic or anything, but it's such a nice summer read. It is perfect if you just want to wind down and don't think about it too much. Just a nice book that keeps your mind of things. And then my final three books are part of the same series because I bought an entire box set and that is the box set of the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemsen. So this is a fantasy trilogy and I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about the story. From what I've gathered from like the premise that it was like on the back of the first book, it's just it sounded very vague. Mostly that it's a fantasy story and like it's about the world ending and lots of exciting things happening. I don't know. It is a series that is not necessarily new, but a lot of people have been reading it recently and they also have been really loving it. One of them is Leonie from the book Leo. Like she was really, really liking the first book. So that is why I just decided to buy the box set because it sounded really amazing and I just really felt... Like I needed somehow another fantasy trilogy because I don't have enough fantasy series as it is. So yeah, we have three books. And what is also nice is that it's like the, um, let me get it out. It's like the floppy paperback editions, which is always amazing. So first we have whoop, the fifth season, then the obelisk's gate, obelisk gate. Okay, this is going great. As you can tell, I'm very well prepared. And then finally we have the stone sky. So those are the three books that I now have to like, get back in the box somehow. <laughs> but yeah, even though I don't really know what the story is about, I'm still so excited to read them because it just sounds like fantasy, fun fantasy, probably also tragic fantasy because there's always some tragicness in those kinds of series. And yeah, just, you know, another trilogy, another series that I definitely did not need, but that I still really, really wanted. <laughs> okay, that was it for this very, very big summer book haul. And I hope you liked it. I hope you had a fun time watching this. And again, it's like the biggest cliche ever, but I am so excited to read all of these books because they all sound amazing. Except of course for the ones that I've already read because I know those are amazing. <laughs> so yeah, it's just yeah very much looking forward to some summer reading. And yeah, what else can I say? I love buying books and I always buy too many books and that will probably never change as well. But yeah, this was it now for this video and if you liked it, maybe go subscribe, give it a thumbs up, whatever, if you want to, of course. But as always, I would really appreciate that. And hopefully I will see you again very soon in one of my next videos. Bye!